It's no big secret that Brexit is the most messy, complicated, multidimensional negotiation that Britain will have been involved in since, well, a long, long time. Uh, and indeed, the same thing for its partners and friends in the European Union. Uh, so we can uh, address the issue of Brexit from many different angles. Is this uh, a negotiation among partners, among a group of people, country, who are trying not to leave value on the table, as we say in negotiation, who are trying to do this in the proper way, to be creative in their negotiation, to think of it as a positive sum game? Or is it really now already becoming among rivals? I wouldn't say enemies, but at least rivals. And sometimes the language used in the UK seems to point to the second. Whereas I think when we teach negotiation, we're always trying to say, well, whatever the context, if you are talking, if you are negotiating, try to approach it as a positive sum game. We are all on the same side of the table trying to make good. How do we create value on the table? Well, we link things. Something that is more valuable to you, I might give. Something that's more valuable to me, you might give. Um, so here we need to analyze this in the Brexit negotiation. And for instance, obviously, we will look at free movement of labor. Um, do Europeans really understand that? Well, that's, if not a red line, okay, we could use red lines as we do in negotiation. But of course, using red line makes you vulnerable because the other side, we, we teach in negotiation, can extract everything from you if they know that this is your red line. Uh, that you won't give in on this. This is a deal breaker. So they'll give you that thing and they'll ask you to concede on everything else. So my advice to the Brits, don't call it a red line. But we all know it's very, very important. So it's a long-term negotiation. So it's all about trying to find this value, assessing linkages. And when we do that, of course, then we bring to bear this famous concept of BATNA, best alternative to negotiated agreement, uh, which defines somehow what we call the ZOPA, the zone of possible agreements. Some of us are, feel very, very much in despair these days, thinking, well, maybe there is no ZOPA or no obvious ZOPA these days between the Brits and their European partners because they want very opposite things.